up kamakailan sa Cagayan de Oro ang two-day event na Football for a Better Life na parte ng isang grassroots football program na pinangunahan ng ilang current and former members ng Philippine ASCOs. To tell us more about this, kasama natin si Namisag Badonan, Graham Cagle at Albert Almandrejo. Welcome back to The Score, guys. Thanks for joining us. Albert, welcome back. First of all, year two yes, ng did. Football for Better Life. Grab yeah. a mic, please. Tell us more yeah, about it. It's year two, Teach, and uh, we're doing another 10 city tour for okay. this year. Mm -hmm. And we started that in Hingoog. Okay. And around uh, 10 other provinces nearby participated. So it's the Regional Football Association of Cagayan de Oro, nice. Agusan, okay. Butuan, and all that. So okay. for the first time, Hingoog, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, a city in between Cagayan de Oro and Butuan ah. hosted such a football tournament. Okay. And so they never had a football never, event this big? Never yeah, in its okay. history. So okay. the people there were very happy. Okay. Especially we brought the two billboard stars. <laughs> One is the star of C5. And C5. they play some football, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, they, they didn't display their abs okay, for, okay. for a change. No? And the other one is the billboard star of Guadalupe. Okay. And so, but they went there for football, and okay. the kids were very happy. Okay, tell us about your experience, Graham. What was it like uh, down there with the kids? Yeah, it was an amazing experience because um, my mum is actually from Mindanao. She's ah, from Nasipit, which is very, very close to okay. Butuan City, where okay. we flew to. Cool. So it was an amazing experience for me to go back there and uh, inspire kids from my mother's province. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, Misaga, uh, you've done some camps in the past before, but what was it like being in a province like this? And as uh, Albert said, it's the first time they had something like that for them. That yeah. big. Uh, I really enjoyed watching the uh, kids trying to play football instead of playing different sport. Mm -hmm. it, it was something new for these kids. And then we saw so many kids, they wanted to do football and they now had chance because of right. pro life to have this kind of opportunity to mm -hmm. show their skills, to show how they are, how they can run, how right. they have a skill. So playing the ball with the feet, mm -hmm. but they really enjoyed and so many participants was there and then we really enjoyed. So I was kind of surprised that the city that they don't really have the province that they don't have that much football. Mm -hmm. But when we they found that there will be something like this, there's so many kids they show up. I right, really enjoyed right. it. Albert, what was it like? Um, so what did you prepare for them? Aside from I know there was mini tournaments, but there was a camp as well. <laughs> Tell us about uh, the coaching part of it and how it was, you know, teaching the kids as well. Okay, there was a clinic of for Balay Pangarap. It's a right. street children project of the mayor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chief, he was there okay. to conduct the first day clinic, Misag and Graham. No? Okay. So we followed the FIFA standard of teaching Great. football 101 for kids 6 to 12 years of age. Okay. Right after the clinic, there was a tournament, age group tournaments, the starting at 8 years of age mm -hmm. until the open for men and women. Wow. Okay. And so well, all these age groups were there. To play for? Yeah, nice. and Great. James yeah. Young Husband was uh. Uh, the one that did the awarding, so Great. you just could Great. imagine the joy that the kids had yeah. uh, for this kind of event. Graham, what was it like? What did you see in the kids' eyes when, you know, it's one thing for them to play and to learn, but to, to be so close to actual football stars and football professional players? Yeah, it's, it's so good to see them um, being inspired by mm -hmm. people like Misag and Chiefy and mm -hmm. James who play for the national team. Mm -hmm. um, what a great um, what a great aspiration for them to aim for. Mm -hmm. Can you put yourself in their shoes? Like if you were that young and you, and you actually got up close and personal yeah. to a football star and you live in the province, <laughs> the likelihood of you, you know, getting in, you know, yeah. in close contact with them and for a sport you love. Well, it is similar for that for me because when I was playing in England, mm -hmm. um, I looked up to these guys like Misag and okay. Chiefy and Phil Young Husband, James mm -hmm. Young Husband, and now I've played alongside them, I've right. played with them. So right, right. it really is like a dream come true for them. Mm -hmm. Misag, for you, wha what do you think it's like for these kids? Nah, you mm. know, they see you guys uh, up close, they get a good camp, they get a good uh, training and a good competition. How long can this experience uh, go for them and how, w how will it help them? I, because uh, as everybody mentioned here that this was like kind of inspiring kids to do. Yep. And it's the most important for me was the, the kids have a new path to change their life. Right, right. That's why this football can change these kids' life, especially this comes, if they work hard, they can go to free education, mm -hmm. a scholarship and joining national team right, right. and get some money or something out of this and change their life, just hard work. And right. that's what makes me happy that Pro Life and this grassroots will teach mm -hmm. these kids and give them new way of life mm -hmm. to change their life instead of going doing like like things that is necessary, like right. drugs or this, they mm -hmm. just uh, uh, they join these football things. And for Albert, I mean Albert, um, you know, through the years, this has been more like an advocacy for you. It, it is work, but it's an advocacy as well um, to bring football players, football coaches to the provinces. 
how fulfilling has it been? I mean, this is year two. Eh, obviously, you don't want to stop. You want to keep <laughs> doing this. So, come sa yung pakiramdam para well, sa uh, As you know, well, soccer economics, it's a book. No? And yeah. they said that for any country to succeed in football, you need three things. Number mm. one, physically support of the government, which okay. we don't have. Uh, a big population, which we have. Yeah. And number three, it's basically exposure of the kids in playing football. Right. So, the more time you play football, the better for us. Mm -hmm. This program serves as a feeder program before they go to the national team, right, which right. starts at U14. No? That's why Chiefy was there mm -hmm. trying to look for kids that had the standing. For uh, his team. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, and from correct. there, maybe uh -huh. take care of them, mm -hmm. give them scholarship, try to recruit them in schools yep. in Manila. So it's really something that we can offer for a better life for right. all these kids. How big is that? Let's say on that note about Chiefy. I mean, this is something he started after he, you know, uh, retired from the Ascals. Yes, he's been going around. That's right. How was your experience with Chiefy and you know helping the kids in, in the provinces as well? Actually, last year we had almost ten thousand kids right. wow. that participated in football for a better okay. life. A number of them landed in scholarships in La Salle in Alabang, okay. then La Salle in Green Hills, even in San Beda, mm -hmm. now uh, even in Letran. No? So this is the trend that's uh, keep on cropping up. Yep. There are so many talents in the province. Back in the day, wala tayong ganyan. Wala, oh, puro oh, yeah. NCR. When you do a national team, yeah. it's all basically that's NCR. Yeah, correct, correct. Now, in the national team, 80% mm -hmm. are from the provinces. Right, right, right. So, and Mindanao is really represented. Right, right. There's a very strong football movement in Mindanao. I mean, these guys y in the UFL, you now play against some of the kids who come from the provinces. Graham, for you, well, what uh, uh, interesting perspective? What would it be like for these kids to now get exposed to Manila football, you know, much earlier in their lives, rather than some of them end up playing Manila football in college only? They play their high school, grade school back in the provinces, but as early as they can get better competition. How big of a boost is that for them? It's a massive boost. Um, if you if you play football abroad, like mm -hmm. in England, where yeah. I was brought up, um, people start playing at four years old, five years old, mm -hmm. six years old. It's so early, and it just gets ingrained in your blood to play football. Right. So as the earlier, the better mm -hmm. for anyone to play football. Absolutely, Nisag, for you, um, the more comp you know, the better competition. You know, not to put down the, the the football in the provinces. It's great starting there. That's a grassroots. But of course, when you converge here, when you're an, a varsity player for your grade school or high school, how big is that for them? For the future of football to develop as well for the Philippines. Um, uh, this is really helped the national team and mm -hmm. the club and the level of Philippine football leagues and Philippine national teams because right. if you kids if the kids started playing in age of five that yeah. means they've been passing the ball more than than us when we started in age of 16 17 or in That's college. That's how late you started? Yeah, I started 24 Seriously? like a professional <laughs> player. Wow. But if you started playing perfect like a train I'm kind of jealous of these kids that Chief uh -huh. is going to teach yeah, these starting six, at five, five years. Yeah, exactly. And then when they True. get age of 17, yeah. for them, that means they touch the ball more than that I did. <laughs> so right, they get right. in better True. professional fo football player. And sometimes I teach some kids now mm -hmm. they're in UFL and play against yeah, them. Yeah. I feel like, why these guys are faster than me? Why <laughs> I, did I wasn't... Had I didn't have the chance when right. I came to Philippines to play football right. as early as, as possible. Yeah. But now with Pro Life and this... Mm -hmm. uh, grass routine really this helped them the f not only f kids the football and the country develop faster and remember tj we brought uh, 11 year old kids in the uk to we train did, yeah. three years ago That's right yeah and these kids three are now years ago na ba yun? three years ago yeah, na yeah. so the little ask now yeah. they're 14 years old and they're okay. part of the national team no? so they went to the uk so a lot of them are with chippy's team that's right eight, so that eight. is a trend no? yeah, so yeah. expose them bring them abroad yep train them, then mm -hmm. from there hopefully we can have a stronger team. For groups like you and, and the private sponsors you have, how important is it that this is not a one-shot deal, that this is a long-term commitment? It should be a long-term commitment mm -hmm. because you cannot do this on a part-time basis. Yeah. It has to be continuing. You keep on increasing people uh, to play football at the right. same time support, no? mm -hmm. a wider support from private sector. Yep. Hopefully the government can come in eventually. Mm -hmm. And this one is being done with the ASCALS Foundation. Right, right. That's it's why right. we have all this... Uh, ask us with us whenever we travel great, great. because that's the one way we can inspire them so they know the ask us wherever we go yep. everybody knows about the ask us of course and that's the way how uh, we can hopefully give hope to these mm -hmm. kids and keep on playing football and now football fever is heating up of course because we're going to host that's right the suzuki cup you know yes. just around the corner so tell us the dates the the next cities or and provinces you're going to visit well, the next date would be in the magueta city you know, okay. we'll be there august 20 and 21 and from th there we go to dipolog tarlac we even go to the Davao del Norte, okay. then the, all over. So Barotac Nuevo also in Iloilo. For sure. And yeah. uh, all the others. So for more information, there is their website, Facebook page? Yes, okay. uh, just uh, Pro Life uh, 
UK Football for a Better Life. There you go. Look for that and you'll find all the information there. Yes. Guys, thank you. This is a great thing that you're doing for the kids out there and uh, all the best. Maraming salamat. Thank you, TJ. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. For more sports updates, keep watching The Score. And don't forget to subscribe.